what is up everybody to the nations worldwide this is the travel couple podcast where we introduce you to couple travelers who offer their advice on how you can travel the world together while earning some money and living that digital nomad lifestyle we are your hosts mike pletz and natalie tune in every wednesday as we interview couples living a digital nomad lifestyle and traveling the world Get relationship advice about being on the road with your significant other and learn how others are struggling and thriving in their personal and business lives, all while traveling the world. This is your one-stop podcast for travel, relationship, and business goals. This week, we have something special to share. Uh, Beginning in April, we are starting a travel couple book club where every other week, We're going to be featuring a book that follows the themes of our podcast, which are travel, relationships, and business. If you want to follow along, go to our website, travelcouplepodcast.com, and join the list. In today's episode, we are talking with travel bloggers from the States, Camille and Niels. They talk with us about their amazing experiences when traveling, their incredible story, and advice for couples to start living a travel lifestyle. So without further ado, here's our interview with Camille and Niels. Today we are joined by Camille and Niels of Couple of Wanderers. Camille is a writer and actress and Niels a photographer, cinematographer and Steadicam operator. They are based in Los Angeles and travel the world together. You can find them traveling the world at Couple uh, Wanderers Dot com. Hello, Camille and Niels, and welcome to the show. How's it going? Thanks for having us. So great to have the two of you. Uh, let's just get started and uh, get to know you guys a bit. How did the two of you meet? Uh, well, we met during high school at a summer film program in Burbank. <laughs> okay. And then uh, how did the relationship blossom from there? Well... <laughs> kind of challenging at first because we we met in the last couple of days of this month-long program Mm -hmm. and uh, had very strong feelings for each other but then we both went back to our respective homes uh for her that was new jersey and for me that was costa rica and this was in pre-skype days so it was (laughs) pretty hard to manage a long distance relationship right there we didn't really know what was going to happen we just knew that we like to talk on the phone a lot yeah like five hours five hours every night nice (laughs) yeah so we dated long distance for uh almost like two and a half years yeah and then uh we actually ended up at the same college here in california oh great yeah yeah that worked out miracle we were both interested in um film program there so that you know it just made sense for us and then yeah the rest is history we've been Gosh, like living together almost a decade now yeah. or something. <laughs> oh, very nice. And um, you guys are married. How long ago did you get married? We got married coming up on two years. Two years. Very nice. And did you do a destination wedding for the marriage or how did that go down? Kind of yes and no. <laughs> uh, we, we got married in Costa Rica, which is where I'm from. So okay. we got married in my hometown and I guess you'd call that a destination, but to me, it was just like getting married at home, so it was great. <laughs> and I had been visiting him on and off there for like 10 years, so it was a really special place for us, and it did. It felt like, it just felt so right, and then yeah. it it was cool because I got to introduce my family to a place that had been really special to me, yeah. and they came down there and got to see us get married on the beach. Perfect. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so... um we're, so it, it kind of sounds like you both were really interested in traveling from the get-go. Or did uh, was one person more interested in travel than the other? How did that go? I think we've always been both pretty passionate about going new places. Yeah, we're, we're both really fortunate that our families enjoyed travel and took us traveling when we were young. Um, you know, everything from just to other states and uh, things like that for yeah, summer road trips, vacations, road trips, yeah, to some more exotic locations for, mm-hmm. especially for Niels um so both of us kind of just yeah we grew up with travel and it's kind of like yeah my family's always liked to travel and yeah that's just part of who we are that's so great awesome okay <laughs> so uh I'm gonna just ask you guys a two-word question and it's uh it's a simple question but for so many it has such a complex answer and that is why travel 
<laughs> Why travel? Wow, that's big. <laughs> I I have I have an answer. I was actually just gonna just gonna say when I was answering the last question. Yeah. Um I think travel is really really important for breaking down barriers. Um, you know, for I think it's something that can uh destroy prejudice and bigotry. You know, you just you can't uh hate people once you get to know them and and see their their life and kind of live in their shoes for a little bit and I think um that it's just a very a very important thing for people to get out there get out of their own their own sphere and um when you do that I think you can spread love and peace I couldn't yeah, agree more yeah certainly one of the things that I think makes you know understanding and connecting with what might otherwise be kind of a mysterious culture uh or different from your own in a hard to understand ways is to go and, and learn what the environment was that, that produced that culture and, and why those rules are the way they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more with what you guys said there. That's awesome. So where were the two of you last? Where are you now and where are you traveling to next? We were most recently in Iceland. We did a, a camper van trip trying to see the Northern lights for my birthday. Yeah. Just, oh, just great. Speak weeks ago it was, it's like i can't even believe that it's been two weeks already it yeah. feels like yesterday it was awesome such an amazing trip and did you get to see the northern lights no <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah we're gonna have to go back okay we, we saw it on the plane on the way over they like turned off the lights and they were like everybody like look at the left side of the plane the northern lights are out and like the whole plane scrambled over there it was pretty cool because it was like a bunch of, you know, adults who were otherwise like kind of cranky because it's a night flight and whatever. And yeah. all of a sudden they just pop up like, you know, excited five year olds and everyone's like, oh, yeah. here, you can look out my window. And <laughs> it was so sweet. It, it like unified everybody in their excitement. And yeah, so we saw we saw the green glow out the window for like a second. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then after that, we had really intense blizzard conditions, actually. While oh, we were there. wow. Yeah. Um, just no solar activity. It was, it was like a perfect mix of no, yeah. no northern lights. Like, oh, even okay. the, like, the sky would clear up. Like, we'd go, you know, we'd like walk to the bathroom at like two in the morning and be like, oh, let's check for the northern lights, you know, and, and the sky was perfectly clear, but then it was like 0.2% chance. So, uh, <laughs> and then of course the, the day we flew out, they had a bunch of solar yeah, activity. Solar oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I we'll see. Have to go again. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so just staying on the topic of Iceland. How how was it traveling there? Um, did you guys rent a car? How far did you travel through Iceland? Um, so this was our second trip to Iceland. Our our first one was actually on part of our around the world honeymoon, and we we spent two weeks there. Okay. Um, so that was and that was in the summer. Yeah, so. we went first in the summer, which I think was a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but the winter was like a whole other thing. I mean, it's I, honestly Iceland's like you want to see it both ways because it's amazing it's a to see place, these yeah. oh, okay. water so frozen it's it's really exciting um but um we rented a camper van and we were actually working with the company camp easy um and so we were um shooting photos for them and kind of capturing our experience and um, a lot of landscape work uh, mostly mm -hmm. in the south yep. yeah yeah for this one because it was a shorter trip we stuck to the south also because in the winter the roads get closed like they're just you just can't go anywhere and, yeah most yeah. the interior is listed as impossible <laughs> yeah <laughs> i got you okay very nice yeah. so, so then where are the two of you right now we're uh, at our home base in los angeles okay very nice and then where are you traveling to next so we're kind of still <laughs> making a decision yeah this says a lot about our style of travel because <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> Like, so we, we usually go to Costa Rica once a year and we haven't been yet. And we usually go around this time. So we've been discussing maybe a last kind minute trip that there. Not there. Yeah. <laughs> we're okay. Like, oh, not there. Um, and then, um, if we, we have a couple of companies that we're talking with right now and we may fly back to Iceland to do some work with them. Um, and then we know for sure that in, uh, the summer for my, my birthday, we're going to do like a Euro trip and, um, I'm trying to do the 30 countries by 30, so I've nice. got five left, and so I'm going to just kind of road trip through Czech Republic, uh, Hungary, um, Slovenia, Slovenia Croatia, Montenegro, Greece. Yeah. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's so cool. Actually, my, uh, Natalie and I were actually planning a road trip very similar to that. We didn't go ahead with it, but 
we'll definitely be looking forward to what if you guys do that or not. That uh, sounds really awesome. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of cool places close together there. So definitely, yeah. Um, okay, so together traveling together, what has been the most rewarding experience that you've had? Traveling together. I mean, I want to just save the entire honeymoon yeah. as, as one answer, I guess. It was, okay. so amazing. it was so amazing to see so many different cultures in such a short period of time. I mean, um, it's just like we went to seven different countries in four months and spent like two weeks in each country. And it was just it was just fascinating. It was amazing to. Yeah, a lot of new places. But but moreover, for me, I think just like getting married and then being just the two of us together, meeting new people, seeing new places for for such a good amount of time was was a really rewarding experience it really allowed us to define this next level of our relationship and ourselves and just be together and it's really rewarding yeah <laughs> definitely so what what um give us like one point from that honeymoon that really stuck out for you guys that you really loved oh man <laughs> or, or one destination oh no yeah. <laughs> So hard. I mean, I, I'd say at the end of it that we f we finished that trip uh, spending a little over a week uh, at a, a waterfront place in Tahiti where it was it was just us and every morning we could just get up and go paddle boarding. We didn't have to see anybody. It was very calm. There's no distractions. And I mean, yeah, I think because that was like our moment to look back at everything we to had done as well on the whole trip. and mm -hmm. to know like, okay, we're going back now. We're going home. We're going back to our married life. Like, you know, um, we, we kind of need to figure out like what, like it gave us a chance to like, look at like what, how we've been living our life, what we liked about it, what we wanted to change, you know, like really look at your goals and your dreams and the plan that you have in place to get to the, you know, to achieve that and, yes. and then kind of revise and like in a place where, it was just the two of us and it was paradise and you yeah. could actually just really think clearly. It was kind of amazing. And even though our, our trip was ending at that point, it, it just left us really excited to, to go home and, and, you know, live our lives together. <laughs> and yeah. we knew, we knew that like travel was something that we were going to incorporate into our life. Like, and, yeah. you know, even as a, as a business now, like we knew, yeah, this is something we really need to be a part of our life all For the time. Sure. So. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Traveling together, what has been your most awkward, embarrassing, or hilarious travel experience? <laughs> oh, yeah. We were, like, talking about this, and then we were, like, w I don't know. Did we land on something? I mean, it's probably you almost getting arrested at the Panamanian border. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. He's right. <laughs> yeah. um, so we were, we were on a trip from um, Panama to Colombia. Yeah. Um, and we were in these speedboats and um, the the engine of our speedboat flooded and the waves were really high. They were like just under the point where they usually call it and don't bring you out for this crossing. OK. Um, this is like 15 foot swells. And 15 oh, foot. wow. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, the, and, and then, the, the you know, when the engine flooded, we're like horizontal to the waves. So the waves oh, yeah. come on the side and we're just like, oh man, just like taking on water, <laughs> like you could high five the wave as it came at you. I mean, it was crazy. Oh, um, wow. And um, the guy, the guide was like calling in our coordinates to um, to the border Search patrol, like in just in <laughs> yeah. case. Like, yeah. And the the other boat like doubled back and came and got us, but we were out on the water for a very long time. And the, the point just being, hours and hours. oh wow, <laughs> that I really had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so when we arrived at the border station. Um, I asked where the bathroom was and this guy, you know, was not very kind and just like pointed over his shoulder, like didn't, didn't want to deal with, with all the people coming in, I guess, or whatever. And I was like, I have to go like right now. And these two other girls are like, I know we were in the boat forever. And so, um, we couldn't really find a bathroom and there was, uh, there were these sandbags and there was a break in them. These two girls were like, let's just pee here. And it was a like, weird situation too, because you couldn't enter the town until yeah. they processed your paper. Oh, yeah. Right. It's like nowhere to go. It was like, what am I supposed to do? And you know, so we had walked over towards the border station and, and didn't see a bathroom. Um, it turned out it was like we were, we were right by it. It was around the corner. We missed it, but I uh, <laughs> didn't know that. And so the three of us like squatted and, you know, <laughs> went to the bathroom and all of a sudden these guards walk up and the guy's got this big smile on his face and he's like, El Baño. And I was like, si, lo siento. Like, yes, I'm sorry. You know, and, and then all of a sudden he gets really serious and he starts 
speaking in rapid Spanish and Niels is fluent, but I'm learning still. And I wasn't quite sure what he was saying, but they made this motion like putting handcuffs on me. And I was like, oh my God. Oh no. <laughs> and the two girls had already bailed. So it was just me. Oh my God. No. <laughs> So he didn't even see, like, he, like they had left. It was just me. And so I'm like, oh, my God. And I didn't have my passport. I had turned it in already to get stamped. So I was like, oh, my God, this is what they say. Like, don't be a foreigner without your passport. Like, this is yeah. terrifying. Um, and uh, Niels had come in in another boat or something. Or I forget. You weren't. He wasn't with me. So I was like, oh, my God. Like, they're going to, like, haul me away. And no one's going to know where I went, you know. Right. And so luckily, the, the guide, it was a very complicated trip. And um, the, the guide sort of kind of owed me one because I had helped out with a lot of um, the people. Oh, that's where it was, something with that's the sick people. Yeah, there were, there were a lot of sick people on this trip, and okay. um, I'm an EMT, and so I've been helping out with these with the people who got sick and getting them to the clinic and stuff. So luckily, I think the guy felt like he really owed me, so yeah. he, like, went yeah. into the guardhouse, and he, like... Pulled some of his own favors. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, on, you know, I always bring good people here. You know, they don't smoke. They don't do anything wrong. Like, you got to let this go, man, and all this stuff. And the guy's, like, motioning at his neck like you know like like a knife and i'm like oh my god oh no like, what's happening is, is it, now he's gonna kill me like what, <laughs> what's this guy talking me into it so apparently that in like local lingo that's kind of like saying like just forget it we're done here get out okay <laughs> so like, okay <laughs> all right so uh yeah they let me go good, <laughs> good. <laughs> oh, no. i was just afraid also because like the newspaper would have read something like you know american peas on guardhouse <laughs> And I'm I'm just so the last Without thing. Passport. Like I am not a, yeah. a rude person. Like I always, you know, our whole thing situation. is respecting culture. When we travel. Like I would never want to like you know desecrate their land or anything. It wasn't intentional. You know, it was like it was like a medical emergency. For sure. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, that definitely is up there for one of the uh, travel experiences. For that, it it, <laughs> it it definitely goes into my next question, which uh, it might possibly be, uh, but. What is the worst travel experience for the two of you? We've had a lot. We've had a few mishaps. Yeah. <laughs> I think because we're so adventurous, um, we find ourselves in some really unique situations. We um, we were lost in the rainforest for 24 hours. That's what I was going to oh, say. Oh, no way. We were both pretty sure we were going to die during this. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of like, honestly, we could do like an hour long yeah, podcast that's a whole just on that story. story. A lot of bad things <laughs> happened in just 24 hours. Yeah. Okay. We had a friend that we, we really trusted and he was trying out this new trip and he wanted to know like, would, would your average American do this? Like you guys come on the trip and you know, it starts it off with like trek. jumping in a river and swimming across and like through rapids. And yeah, we went up this uh, slot canyon that we couldn't come back down later because of the afternoon rains. And so we were committed to this trek by that point. It was like one way out. Yeah. Oh, wow. We uh, we were a little un underprepared at the time. And the whole experience is definitely a wake up call in terms of, you know, carrying your own uh, medical equipment. And like both of us are very well trained, but we relied on him like a hundred percent and right. he said it was gonna be like a casual day hike we'd be yeah. back by 5 p.m so we like kinda phoned it in. we wore <laughs> cotton and like you know we only brought like a couple protein bars like you know and yeah um so you know by like three in the morning we're like soaked and like we're trying to build a hut yeah. out of um nothing's dry. stuck in the rainforest you know using our machetes to cut shut stuff down and wow. trying to start a fire in a rain soaked rainforest isn't a thing and yeah. it was crazy yeah <laughs> oh, wow very cold yeah. yeah that's definitely up there too some good stories <laughs> the two of you have. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's let's get into talking about uh, relationships when on the road, because it, it's it sounds like you guys have been through a lot together. Um, let's talk about the relationship aspect of traveling. How do you feel traveling and the experiences that you have been through has affected your relationship? Wow, I mean, you could go in a lot of different directions with that, like. It depends on because travel produces such a wide variety of experiences. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it gives you just the chance to take a breath from from the stresses of day to day life and, and really get back in touch with just being with each other in the world. And then at other times, it's a harrowing experience that, you know, <laughs> I guess builds trust and leaves you closer together for what you've been through. <laughs> yeah, Definitely. Overall, the, the answer is like that it's very, it's just always positive. Like, yeah. you know, we could be like at Generally home, like stressed out and like, you know, maybe like our communications kind of off. Like usually Niels and I communicate really well, like it's seamless. And then every once in a while, it's like, whoa, what's happening here? You know, like I, we're, it's like we're speaking a different language. This is so unlike us. And 
a lot of times travel is like the reset that it we can need. Be a nice like, reset like that. Yeah, yeah, you just it brings you in sync to go somewhere new and explore it together. Yeah, you have to work together when you're traveling. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. we always say that's you'll you'll learn a lot about each other and your relationship when you travel together. Yeah, I mean, new experiences really make you grow as as a person, and to do that together with someone else and and to grow together is, I think, a really fantastic experience. Definitely. Yeah. yeah excellent. So. Oh, uh, okay. So when planning a trip together, uh, who's going to take care of what? Do you guys have certain <laughs> tasks that you assign to one another? Or, uh, <laughs> how does that go down? <laughs> yeah, we definitely think, do. Yeah. yeah, probably fall into the task <laughs> category pretty well there. It was, yeah. It was, it, it was organic. Like, it definitely, we have our own strengths and, you know, and we fall into that. Just It just kind of happens. But now, yeah. now we've done it so much, there's definitely roles. Like, um, Niels is the gear guy. He's definitely, like, the technical one and yeah. so like he's getting the cameras ready and Charge all the batteries and stuff like that do yeah. firmware <laughs> yeah, yeah and and he'll be the one who's like did you bring your ice axe and i'm like oh yeah the ice axe sure you know like because i i love doing the adventures but i often don't think about the the technical side and, and he's he's the one who's got that on lock and then um i have the patience to do the booking <laughs> i can't I, I can book flights, but I can't put the time and effort into comparing flights that it really takes to get good deals, and she really can. So, <laughs> like, I, I will spend the time on the computer, like, doing the right comparisons. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll see the third flight and be like, That's, that looks great. Let's go ahead. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. And then uh, you guys have obviously been to many, many places, but what is the one place that you would recommend? To go to for couples. Wow. Um, well, actually, I think I would say. Uh, I mean, I would probably say Pankor Laut, like in Malaysia. That was amazing. That that, that was, was really nice. Yeah, yeah, we on our honeymoon we went to. So we did a pretty adventurous honeymoon, and it's not like not your typical honeymoon, and and not the like romance is always flowing kind of honeymoon that everyone <laughs> everyone might might think because yeah. you know we, we were like sleeping in a car and like camping and like crazy yeah. weather in Iceland and eating sandwiches because like Iceland's so expensive so it's like you know it was just like a, like a big adventure but it wasn't always like romantic necessarily and then when we got to um we were originally planning to go to the Philippines and the weather changed and um there were some issues with the the, the like the current politics were changing and we thought ah, this just seems like maybe not the best time to go there so like last minute like we're in Dublin Ireland and we're flying up the next day to the Philippines and we're like what do we do? And Niels did a bunch of research. Actually, yeah. So you, you did the planning for that one. Yeah. <laughs> and, I was like, oh. yeah. Um, and he was like, we're going to Malaysia. And I was like, I don't know anything about Malaysia. And he was like, yeah, well, we're going to find out when we get there. Let's go. They're not in monsoon season. <laughs> I basically picked it from a weather map. <laughs> yeah. So so we went there and then we um we knew that it was like one of our first like beach destinations. So we were like, this could be our more romantic kind of honeymoon place. And so we went to a place called uh, Pankor Laut which is over water huts. And I, that was like a island. dream for me. Yeah. 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 And, um, it's probably one of the most affordable over water huts in the world. Um, cause I had done a lot of research on that. Yeah, and this was like a quarter of the price of other places. Not yeah. Even. Like wow. the cheapest usually is like 600 or 700 a night. And these were like 200 a night for like a, like a full package too. Like we got like a catamaran boat yeah, and like, meals and yeah, meals wow. included. And oh my God. But it was, honestly like such luxury like i've never experienced really like high end. you know they they time out like when the champagne arrives to your room like that you know enough that you're like settled in and you've like taken in the views like yeah, it's just awesome. perfect so yeah, romantic very I would, exquisite yeah, service. definitely a, a great couple's destination yeah that sounds so great and sorry <laughs> where was this again in malaysia so this is um what it's on the it, it, north um, northwestern side um it's called pulau Pangkor Laut and okay. Pulau Island. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Pangkor Laut Resort. Awesome. And then when you're there, uh, what did you guys get up to when you were there? Um, well, it was cool, actually. They had a great honeymoon package. And normally I don't do packages because they tend to not, you, you, usually you're paying a little bit more and then you don't, you know, you, maybe you don't even get to use all the perks and stuff like that. But this was like perfect. Like we had a sunset cruise it's on very a couples oriented. Yeah. Actually, a lot of. Great couples activities. Yeah, we did a sunset cruise. Yeah, on the the junk. We had uh, several really nice meals together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they offer like a you know table on the sand type 
dinner as well. And uh, we did a, uh, we sailed a little catamaran together. Mm-hmm. That yeah, was, was awesome. really fun. That was our first time sailing a boat together. Yeah, we both had, had done sailing like separately and it was pretty cool because Niels was like, oh my gosh, you're really good. I didn't know you were this good. <laughs> Total pro. <laughs> That's great. Some yeah. paddle boarding. Yeah, paddle boarding was awesome. We did that like around yeah. the underwater huts and stuff. Yeah. Underwater huts. Underwater huts. Yeah, underwater. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like such a great destination. Nice. Yeah, snorkeling. Snorkel. And they had this beautiful Emerald Cove beach and we got, you know, food and drinks on the sand, like, you yeah. know, right on the Beach water. Bar. Yeah. Wow. That was, yeah. That sounds awesome. Was this? Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. Also, they had this amazing spa village, which is like, honestly, I was thinking, I was like, when there was something we did, it was like, it took up our whole that day. Remember that? Deal. That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like a ritual. Yeah, like, couples massage. they brought yes. you in and yeah, they had like the, like, you know, three different bath of, houses. Yeah. And, like, hot baths. Oh, wow. And first and then an yeah, aromatherapy was, center you smell like this steaming pot of you know citrus yeah, whatever and then you know oh my god it was amazing oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then we got our couple's massage and um i tried something unique it's called like smoking where they like kind of it's just it's supposed to be more of like a cleansing your aura type thing but it was really it's like um they had a lot of very traditional like Chinese medicine type things that we we don't get at a traditional spa here in america so that was pretty cool yeah. And then w- did this wrap up your honeymoon? Was this the final destination? No. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is like just past halfway through. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah. it sounds like the perfect like final destination. Of <laughs> yeah, the we probably could have gone home after that. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, then we had a month in New Zealand in a camper van. Yeah. And then and we then did we the did Tahiti, Tahiti, which we already told you. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that sounds like quite the honeymoon, guys. That's it was really cool. Amazing. (laughs) Do you have any more advice you'd want to give couple travelers out there? Hmm. I mean, I would say, I guess it, I think it depends very much on the, the couple, but like for us, we never really fight about like destinations, you know, and I, but I do hear that from other couples like, well, he always wants to do this and she always wants to do this. And I think like, it's just really important you know, not just when traveling, but in your partnership to make sure that each person is, is, you know, like their soul is fed, you know, um, Hmm. it's, it's great to have things that you do together, but sometimes, you know, if, if someone needs to go off and like read on the beach on their own for an hour, like that's fine, you know, and giving yourself that time and giving yourself that time guilt free and with your partner, not guilting you for taking that time. Like that's very important. Yeah. That's actually an interesting an interesting thought is like if you're traveling as a couple, how do you make room to, to also travel as an individual? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a really good, uh, especially when if I mean, couples can have that shared uh, idea that they want to travel, but there's so much, so many different aspects of traveling. Whether you're an adventure yeah. traveler or you want to resort, right? There's there's mm-hmm. a lot of things to consider for sure. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So- yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, you're, it's a good point you're making. It's like there's so many different ways to travel and, and you know, it, it's easy to get uh, get excited about a particular thing that you might be able to do in a country and, and maybe one person wants to or the other doesn't and just going with the flow and, and letting the experience surprise you with what it has to offer. Definitely. Yeah. I think travel in general is a lot of compromise and, you know, things yeah. don't always go the way you plan. And, right. You know that kind of thing, and the weather changes, or and so, someone gets sick. You right. know what I mean, like things like Lose that. And, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> never know what's gonna happen. But that's such a good lesson for for life, you know. And that's what we love about travel. It's like those those lessons you learn when you're on your trip. Like if you bring those home and apply them to your relationship, if they're just as important. They're very valuable. You know? Yeah. Definitely, I couldn't agree anymore, guys. That's so great. Um, yeah, and like you said, travel comes with so many question marks. And there are things that are going to go wrong, especially when you're traveling as much as you guys do. Uh, and it just speaks so much to that relationship that you can just move past it and keep on making those memories together. Yeah. Yeah, very true. <laughs> so in our final uh, segment of our podcast here, we'd like to talk about your blog and what you guys are doing uh, to generate, to, to create a travel lifestyle, basically. So mm-hmm. just to start off, where did the name Couple of Wanderers come from? <laughs> um, <laughs> I 
Well, we're a couple. <laughs> 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 and we we really wander is kind of more of like a you know, like it like an ethos. It's like yeah, what we kind what of we believe in like travel our, style. Yeah, like our travel style. Yeah. Perfect. Um because, you know, we don't really like as we've mentioned already, like we don't really like to plan too much because we you know, opportunities can come up and we want to be open to them. So um we like to be pretty flexible. So we usually plan maybe like a little little infrastructure, like maybe we'll go to this town or whatever, you know have like a, a bare bones plan. And then, you know, if something comes up and someone's like, Hey, there's this party or, Oh, have you guys gone to this cave? Like, you know, we want to be able to say yes <laughs> and go do that stuff. So yeah. that's why wander was important for us. Gotcha. So, get lost us. <laughs> yeah. so whose idea was it to start a travel blog or was this uh, something you guys both agreed upon and when did it start? Did it start before the honeymoon while you guys were, uh, just dating or how did this come together um so i had a we both had a significant um event in our life that changed our world a lot um i was biking one day and i was hit by an suv um on my way home from work and i was in a wheelchair and um i had to relearn to walk and um you know as you can imagine that wasn't just hard for me that was hard for Niels as my partner um, and so I spent about like three years on and off the couch recovering. I had, uh, two hip surgeries and it seemed like every time I started kind of getting back to my life, yeah. um, there was always like some new health issue that had come from being hit, um, that we had to deal with. And, um, when the second hip surgery came around and I was on the couch, I was like, you know, I am so sick and tired of like not having something to like work on and move yes. forward with in life. For sedentary for a while. Yeah. And, and I, um, I was looking at old travel photos and I thought like, what I really want most is to be able to get back to travel and like seeing the world with meals. And, um, I wanted to get, you know, physically fit and be able to do that again. And I, you know, I hit sort of a plateau with my physical therapy and was still having chronic pain. And it was starting to seem like I could not, I would never have like a pain-free life again. And I was like, I needed motivation. And so I started posting on Instagram just old travel photos. And it, it kind of gave me the motivation, like, look, you know, these are the, the adventures I want to get back to. I can do this. Yeah, I can do this. inspiring for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so then I thought, well, if this is inspiring for us, like I want to be inspiring for others. You know, there's, everyone has challenges and, um, you know, I'm, we, we aren't unique in that. And so whatever your challenges are, you know, we just want to encourage people and say that like, you can, you can get out there. Like we think travel really heals. Um, but we also know that like, you know, you don't need to have a huge like budget to be able to do this. Like if it just means like going to that park you've never gone to that you've always wanted to go to, or, you know, just, um, that, uh, museum over in the other town, like we just want to encourage people to live like their best adventure. Right. Um, you know, we're not saying that our way is the right way, but like just to get people out and see the world in, in the way that they can and, and be inspired, you know, and, um, go somewhere new. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't matter where or how far away or how much it costs. Just go somewhere new. Yeah. Break, break that, break that routine and, and get out there. And for us, that was just really healing. We were like, you know what? The, we went through a lot, but the world is still a beautiful place and there's so much to see and do. And okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get back into shape and we're going to go see the world together. Definitely. That's such an amazing story, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting. And it's so awesome that you guys share that with your audience. Cause I mean, if you don't get inspired from that story, don't think you're human. So that's, <laughs> that's really awesome. Um, so how has the blog transformed from its early days? And where do you see a couple of wanderers going towards? Um, so we are moving into a lot more of a video focused um yeah, I think that like, the two big things that we're we're trying to pursue going forward are our video work and uh, longer form writing, especially like travel yeah. guides and okay uh, write ups of some of the more interesting experiences that we've had. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we have a lot of stories and we tell them to people and they're like, "Why isn't that on your blog?" And I'm like, like "You know, good point. Okay, like, <laughs> and yeah. you know, we we also have a lot of like little tidbits and travel details that honestly, I like short sightedly, I thought people would find boring. And, and it turns out people are like, no, I want to know those details. I want to know that a shower in Iceland costs, you know, anywhere between three and $5 for five minutes, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, 
so we have all those those tips to share and and um so we're kind of pulling those together and getting a little more organized in that way um and right now we're revamping our website so that we can include more of our video content because right now it's more like a basic website but we have like really i i have like huge visions for this website <laughs> and yeah. um so we're just looking to um find someone who can help us bring those visions to life um because i'm not i'm not a um Neither of us is we're not web designers. Web design thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. We have a lot of skills, but web design is not one of them. So, <laughs> so then, um, when you guys are traveling, what are you guys doing to earn some money? How how does that come about? Um, so we both we haven't really like officially quit our jobs or anything. Like some of the travel couples out there, we yeah. actually we really enjoy our our work here. Yeah, in we LA. actually like our jobs. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> yeah. We're not, we, we work in the film industry and, you know, it's sort of like it took years to really put that infrastructure in place and make those contacts and, you know, get the skill set to be able to do that. So both of us, um, more so Neil's because after I was hit, I, I stepped away from acting um, for a couple of years and um, have just been focusing on a couple of wanders, honestly. So I, I do that almost full time. And nice. um, Neil's is, uh, is working in the industry. Yeah, I'm still on set fairly regularly. Yeah, Harder. he's some bigger projects and it's exciting. He'll be on, you know, like a Netflix feature and we're like, this is pretty cool. Like, you know, we don't, we don't need to quit this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? That's pretty awesome. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. But so also, that's... you know, working 12 hours a day, six days a week leaves me after six weeks of that, like, let's get out, let's go somewhere new and <laughs> yeah. chill out for a while. So then with your job, Neil, do you have time to incorporate that, uh, that travel? Like when you work that, that much for six weeks, do you get a bit of time off and then you guys can go traveling? Yeah, I mean, the cool thing is that it's really just up to me. And I, you know, I could always say no to doing any of it and, and step away to go travel. So it's really just about managing, you know, which are the right opportunities and not spending too much time on it. Yeah. And that flexibility is so awesome to have, especially when you're working and especially when you want to incorporate travel into that lifestyle, for sure. Yeah. Well, and often uh, that job takes me on the road. So it, produces a lot of travel of its own yeah we've done like there have been kind of there's been like you know cross like cross promotional i don't know what the term is i don't know but like <laughs> like he'll get a job you know um for film and i'm like okay well i can come with you and now a couple of wanders yeah. is going you know and so in his off days yeah. like we were in austria and like in his off days like we get to explore together and then we create content for a couple of wanders so um that's kind of cool the way that works out yeah that is so awesome yeah that is such a cool uh thing to incorporate <laughs> What has been the best destination that you guys have gone to while on uh, assignment? Mm. Iceland is yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotcha. I, I just have a really big soft spot for Iceland. That place is is magnificent. Yeah, so. yeah, but I I really enjoyed Austria. That Austria was, was great. Was yeah, really I think special. spending a little over a month in Salzburg and you know really getting to explore the town was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And we met a lot of the like local actors who were like a big deal there. And it was a lot of like, it was kind of, you know, <laughs> like that, that sort of Hollywood dream kind of moment where like we were getting into the clubs with those actors. And yeah, that, that was pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah that was fun. It's a small enough place that everyone knew you're, oh, you're with the movie. Like, <laughs> yeah, the movie. Like, in LA, there's no like the movie. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's like, yeah. It's, like, so it's funny because they'd be like, oh, you're, you're the, the movie. And you're like, yes, <laughs> word travels fast. <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool. Um, so especially when you're working uh, a job and you're trying to incorporate travel into, into your lifestyle, there's something that you guys need to do to be able to save for these travels. Do you guys have any tips you want to give our listeners that are working a job and want to incorporate travel into their lifestyle, how they can save towards that goal? Yeah, we, we talk about this a lot um, because we... Like, we don't really, I don't think we do anything, like, extreme. We do a lot of little things, you know? Like, yeah, I, I think being in, in such a consumer-driven society where you're spending money all the time, it, mm -hmm. there's a lot of opportunities to not spend money. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah and, and everyone kind of needs to choose what those are for themselves mm -hmm. or, or choose different ones at different times. But there's there's always there's always something that you're doing that you could you know, not do and travel instead. <laughs> like someone was just telling me about like getting your car detailed for like $180. And I was like, Whoa, that's like really expensive yeah. because to me, that's like 
half of a flight to Costa Rica and I'd rather take the flight to Costa Rica and like clean my own car, you know, like just, just like little things like that. Really, if you start crunching the numbers, they do add up. And I was looking around our apartment and we were just talking to a friend last night. I was saying, you know, um, this was given to me by a family member. We inherited this from, from a family member. We have a Um, lot of found furniture. (laughs) Yeah. Like, like the couch we're sitting on right now is actually, we, we got it from like a young couple, um, about like 10 years ago, it was like free. They were just giving it away and they, they got a new couch and then they said, Oh, and the, the cover on it was the first sewing project my mom ever did. And like, we just love this couch. (laughs) And so instead of buying, you know, like a $1,100 new couch, like we, we keep our old couch and you know, we, we, we made our own shelving units. Like we bought the plywood and we built them ourselves and we've had those for like eight years. And um, even the computer that we have was actually his sister's first. Yeah, and it was a hand-me-down. The last computer I bought before that was like over 12 years ago. Yeah, because you know, have a computer. Yeah, two yeah. hand-me-down computers in a row. Yes. I haven't bought a new phone. I don't know. It, like his I screen can't. broke, but like he still uses his phone. We don't like go and fix it and replace it. Like yeah. you just kind of make it work and those little things do add up. And you It's know, not for everyone. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, like I, I haven't washed my car in quite a while. It's not my favorite, but it does, you know, it adds up. Yeah. 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 And, um, yeah, I think making those, those little decisions, um, you know, like Niels is right that it it really is, it's a personal decision. Like I know that some people would rather have their car detailed than go to Costa Rica, but for us, you know, it's it's all, it's just a matter of perspective. Um, and then, you know, sometimes we say no to going out, you know, friends want to go out and we're like, Oh, well, we kind of spent a lot this week. Like how about instead you guys come over for dinner and we'll cook you a nice meal and, you know, mm-hmm. share share a cheaper bottle of wine, you know, yeah. like that kind of thing. I try yeah. really hard to avoid any sort of uh, product that's on a subscription basis, mm-hmm. you know, like I don't pay for ad-free Pandora or anything like that. It's, you know, we just have Netflix. We're not uh, yep. like a cable package or a, bun- or a Hulu package or other stuff. So, yeah, we do get a lot of our friends will come over like, why do you guys still have the ads? And we're like, because yeah. we're not going to spend money to get the ad. Get rid of the ad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, these these are all great ways, and, and like you said, those little things really do add up. And we yeah. cut our own hair. Yeah, we cut our own hair. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we make I make a lot of our own cleaning products. Um, so there's some stuff in the house that we we make our own bread, and you know we we buy things in bulk, and um, we're kind of homesteaders for how much yeah. we like to travel. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, really cool. Yeah. Like our, our own compost and we, you know, we're creating our own garden with that. And we're also very happy to travel cheap. Yeah. You know, we, the first time we went to Iceland, we, we slept in a tent the whole time. It's, or the car. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not kidding. We ate sandwiches every day or those like those little meals where you just like boil water yeah, and put it in the bag. <laughs> top yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So that kind of brings up something I really want to touch on really quickly here, but, uh, when you guys do decide to travel and stay and sleep in your car or sleep in a tent, uh, where do you guys find a spot to do that over the night? Uh, have you ever been uh, asked by any locals, like, you shouldn't be sleeping in your car at the side of the road or anything like that? We're, I, I think actually compared to other people, we might even be considered, like, too conservative. We're very careful about that. We're, yeah, we yeah. really don't risk it. <laughs> like we, a lot of people were like, "What are you talking about?" It was really hard to find a place to camp overnight in Iceland, and we're like, "Well, you know, that was someone's private property yeah, here." We, we really try to follow the rules. <laughs> yeah, okay. because because if you don't, you ruin travel for other people, and we're very aware of that. You know, we don't want to be a part of the problem; we want to be a part of the solution. And, and you we know, don't particularly enjoy being woken up by somebody knocking angrily on the car. So, <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, especially if it's like the end of the day. It's like, and for us, you know, in Iceland, it was like the end of a work day and we might've had a beer and stuff. It's like, well, we're not even going to be able to like drive because we just had a beer and we went to bed and you know, it's like, we yeah. don't want someone knocking and trying to make us like leave. We just, we like to kind of do it right as much as we can. Yeah. Um, I'd say the only, like, I think you were kind of asking like, have we ever had any mishaps with that? Um, it wasn't, we weren't in trouble or anything, but it was really awkward. We, um, in, I guess again, in Iceland, we were, yeah. we were nocturnal. Um, so we were up all night and then we parked the car on what we thought was like a deserted beach. And if anyone knows this beach, they're going to laugh really hard when they hear it's this. Like hilarious. <laughs> um, but we thought it was a deserted beach. 
and it turns out it's Diamond Beach in Iceland, and it's like it's exceptionally popular. Everybody <laughs> goes there to see these icebergs floating yeah. down the river from Jokulsárlón Glacial Lagoon, and so we wake we up woke that up. evening, and there's like hundreds of people all around the car. They're just like staring oh, wow. at us while we're like passed out asleep, you know. And like parked I wake up to like yeah, we parked at Hertz <laughs> because we thought it was our own beach, you know, and like <laughs> and these people are like staring in at us, and we're like you know half covered in our sleeping bag, and it's windows like oh are all yeah, the windows are fogged. <laughs> I mean, it looks really bad. I'm just so that was that was kind of a funny thing. We're like, okay. I see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, different places have have different sets of rules about that kind of thing, and and some are are very loose, and you can just really park anywhere, yeah, and no one cares. So. Um, and other places used to be that way, and and are now very regulated. So yeah, I you mean, just kind of have to feel it out. That's something that we like to talk about and a, a message that we try and get across people. Like, we encourage them to travel, but we encourage them to travel sustainably and thoughtfully because, yeah, you know, if right. you go there and you're parking on the side of the road and going to the bathroom, uh, you know, if everybody does that, all of a sudden there's, you know, yeah. feces all over and it ruins it. And just you try know. to make it so that the locals smile next time a tourist comes through. And yeah. Of... Right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> awesome. And do you guys have any more uh, advice you want to give? couple travelers out there that are trying to make travel more of a lifestyle look local yeah i would start yep. with especially if they're trying to make it a lifestyle like do you mean like as a business or do you mean just in general to incorporate it more in their life just to incorporate it more in their life yeah i would say that you know um there's tons of things right around us that we haven't even seen yet and and we've gone to all these like awesome exotic places but people are like have you been to you know, Mount Jacinto, like there's a cool, you know, place to get lunch up there. And we're like, no, we haven't, you know. Realistically, so. we could spend the rest of our lives just exploring California. Yeah, yeah, right. and I, I can guarantee that the same could be said for like, you know, almost, almost everywhere, everywhere out there. So mm -hmm. I would always say like start start small, start local, um, you know, and that, that will allow you also to save the money that you want to save for a bigger trip. But, you know, don't, don't let – um resources, financial resources, like be the reason why you don't go out and just do something different with your weekend. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, awesome advice, guys. Well, there you have it. Camille and Niels, a couple of wanderers sharing their travel stories with you today on the To The Nations Worldwide Travel Couple Podcast. And I want to say a special thank you to our guests. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us on this episode. You're thank welcome. You very this much was really us. fun. Yeah, it was yeah. Been lovely. <laughs> It's been such a great time talking to you, too. So I just want to hand the, the floor over to you. Uh, let our audience know where they can find you guys, what's the best way to reach out to you and connect with you. Sure. Um, so Instagram is really like our, our main platform, I would say. Um, that's where you get a lot of the awesome photos from our travels around the world. Uh, we share the current photos when we're on a specific trip, and then we um, mix it up with a couple of previous um trips you know while we're while we're at our home base and while we're trip planning for our next one so that's at couple a wanderers um so that's not of wanderers it's couple a uh, with an a <laughs> and um then we've also got twitter if you prefer that um that's a uh, couple wanderers dropped the a because of twitter's <laughs> um max characters um we're on facebook and that's couple of wanderers um, and then our website is coupleawanderers.com and that's where we will be expanding and showing more of our video content and um, those travel guides for the specific tips that everyone's asking for. So that's coming soon. We're going to start off with Iceland and then we've got, gosh, another 10 to write at least. So coming. yeah, we've got, we've got really a lot coming, coming to our audience. So we're excited. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the best way for people to get in touch is to just DM us on Instagram. Yeah. Or, or email coupleawanderers at gmail.com and we're very responsive and we love when people reach out so yeah, yeah ask us travel questions and, and you'll definitely get a response from us thank you to all of our listeners out there to the nations worldwide we cannot express our appreciation enough for you tuning into this episode you can visit the show notes page for this particular episode at travelcouplepodcast.com slash nine for episode nine you can also join our newsletter on that page to get notified when our next episode comes out and what it is about. Leave a comment on the page and we'll be sure to get back to you. And if you'd be so kind, please subscribe and leave us a review on this podcast. It helps us understand who's listening 
and how we can help you by delivering more valuable information about the world of travel. This is Mike Pletz and Natalie, hoping you have a wonderful adventure out there to the nations worldwide.